so this is Felix in the chute right now. Um, when I'm trying to get these guys to go in the chute, all I'm doing is applying pressure until they're going towards what I'm trying to get them to do. And as soon as they do it, I'm going to try to take that pressure off. Um, sometimes it might take a little bit more pressure to get them in there. I'm not whacking them with anything. I'm just kind of making myself bigger and making noise. Uh, with him right there, I was trying to get him to do it. And as soon as he turned around and looked at the chute, I stopped and he walked right in. So I'm going to go ahead and get the halter on him. I'm going to get him groomed up and then I'm going to lead him out and work on leading for probably just a couple minutes, honestly, and then we'll go from there. But before I do that, I'm going to sweep this up because last time, you know, the first time I led him, uh, he started running around and uh, I actually slipped in the pile of poop and fell right on my butt. So we'll go ahead and take care of that before we do anything. Hey, buddy. buddy. So that is something that I've been working on them with too, is getting them to just get their nose in the halter without me having to fight them. And how I'll do that is I'll just start by pulling their head over and then put it in front of them and hope they tip it down before he would fight it. Um, even if he just keeps his nose there, I'm gonna call that a win. So just pull over, put it in front. And if he lets me do that, then we're good. Eventually, I will start teaching him how to tip it more. The first time I did that there, he did tip it right in. And how you teach them how to drop their head is you just apply a little bit of pressure up on their pole. And when they make a try to drop it, then you just release that pressure, maybe pet them a little bit up there. All right, you stepped on your lead, dude. So I'm just gonna start off really slow with this. Usually when the curry comb actually does make contact with him, he settles a bit. I'll go to a spot where he's more comfortable after I get him back. And if I see him starting to get a little more concerned about it, I'll just try to get out of there before he has to leave. So right there, when I start going towards his cinch line and his belly, he's starting to get uncomfortable. So I'll go back up to his shoulder where he's more comfortable. And I'll try to get down there to the belly again. 
comfortable, went up to his shoulder. And now I'm gonna stop, and give him a quick little break. We'll go ahead and start up on the shoulder again. And we'll start working on getting a little lower. Back up to his shoulder and give him a break. Right there he started to get uncomfortable. We'll go back up there to the withers. And this time I'll start probably more down towards this inch. Just do it one time. Go again. He thought about leaving there. I'm gonna go right back down and back up. I wanna try to get it where he's not moving or moving his feet while I'm doing this and I'll stop. So right there, he didn't have to move his feet. I got down there to his cinch line. And he's starting to be okay with that. He's realizing it's not gonna hurt him. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the other side. I'm also gonna grab a mane and tail brush before I head over there because his mane is starting to get those wind knots again. I did brush him out a couple weeks ago completely, except for his tail. Where are you going? Pretend like nothing's happening. They have a saying, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Well, this isn't a big deal. I'm just brushing your mane. You can't really go anywhere in here. You can't hurt me, you can't hurt yourself. So I'm just gonna keep going until you stop. And then once he settles, I'll back away. Just took him a minute to remember that this actually does not hurt him. It's not as scary as he thinks it is. Mane's a mess, dude. Want we'll to check it out? Isn't as scary as you think it is? Oh man, it's worse. It's worse than you think it is. What did you think I was going to do? Cut your head off with it? I know, it's scary. I got down to his belly until he could stand there without thinking it was going to kill him. And I stopped. So I'll give him a couple minutes just to relax before I work on leading. And when I open up that chute door, I know he's going to come flying out of there. But 
I will just get my hand set up so he runs into that pressure. Um, that's something that I haven't really talked about much here. Um, and I saw a comment on YouTube actually talking about that, how it's not really talked about that much. But I think more people need to understand that when you're working with a young horse or you're working with an unhandled horse, you really do need to get your hands set so they can run into that pressure instead of just trying to jerk on them and trying to keep that lead loose the entire time because you know, they might try to take off and you might try to go with them keeping that lead loose because you don't want to pull on their head when really they're just learning to run away from you and they're getting a release of pressure when they're doing it. Or if you just want to jerk your horse around, they're just going to learn that you're just going to jerk them around and that's not a pleasant experience. So if you could set your hands up and let them run into that pressure when they're coming out here, they're like, oh, well, I got to come back over. And then you relax your hands as soon as they come off of that pressure. That's how they learn to start leading up, start being more with you instead of learning how to get away, learning that you're just going to be a jerk and pull on them. So if you don't take anything else from this, at least take this. And that's another thing too. Give your horses breaks. If you guys are working on something and they get it, or if they get close to trying to figure it out, if they make any sort of attempt, give them a break. Let them think about it and then go back at it and work on it again. And even if you get something good done, give them a break, then start working on something else after a minute or so. Count to 30 in your head. That's, that's a good rule of thumb. Count to 30 in your head. So when I let him out of here, I really want you to focus on what my hands are doing. Um, when I say set my hands, I'm not bracing and going all crazy like this. I'm literally, when he comes out of here, I'm just gonna set my hands and my body up at the end of this rope like this and let him run into that pressure. And as soon as he relaxes and comes, or comes off of that pressure, I'm gonna let that line down. A lot of people, what I see, to, it, it irks me. I'm just waiting to see the day when some kid gets dragged off across some gravel and they wrap their hands like this. Do not do that. Hold your lead rope organized like this. If you need to organize it more, you can just lay it on top of itself. Um, another thing, when you are working with horses, make sure you have your hand where your pinky is facing towards the horse's head. You have more feel in your pinky right here than you do in any other finger. And you need to be able to feel when they can give to that pressure so you can give back to them. So remember, pay attention to my hands and what they're doing when I let him out of here. He did not have to take off that time, right there, right there. Before he was just tearing out of that chute like he needed to get out of there. Um, he is actually learning. So that is what happens when you get your hand set up. If they run into that pressure, they don't want to do that all the time. You'll see kind of what I mean by the setting up the hands. You go back and watch the episode from two weeks ago. Um, I believe he actually was the one that I was working with in that video as well, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see kind of what, how doing that can actually help you out in the future. I mean, he's actually leading up, he's snorting like crazy, but he understands what he needs to do. And going forward, this will make it a lot easier to work with him. I mean, we're making these baby steps right here. He understands somewhat how to lead and once he gains confidence in this and he really understands this concept that's when we can start working on the other things but first you got to work on contact then you have to work on leading and then you could start going through all the other things and right there he wasn't pulling on me i didn't have to pull on him he just walked right up so i'll give him a little bit of time just to kind of relax if I can get up to him and pet him, I will try. Okay. 
I'll see if you'll come out and make that contact with me as well. Once he settles, I'll go ahead and relax too and take my hand away. I'll give him that break. He's licking and chewing. That means he's releasing dopamine into his brain. Whenever they lick and chew like that and work their mouth, they start creating uh, saliva again. And that actually releases dopamine in their brain. Good boy. So he reached out and touched me, but he scared himself. He still made the attempt. So I'm gonna give him that break and I'm gonna try again here in a minute. But we're gonna start working on this. He's gonna start getting more comfortable. Maybe he'll get where Nadia and Jilly are. I can walk right up to Nadia or Jilly now. I mean, they, it takes a minute to kind of hook on, but more or less I can walk up to him and start petting him. Good job, buddy. So that's all I'm really going to do with him today. I might work on leading for a couple more minutes, but he's making contact. He's trying to figure out leading and he's doing a pretty good job at it considering he's an unhandled Mustang. Well, he was an unhandled Mustang. So we're just going to keep building on this. Um, hopefully in the next couple weeks, we'll start working on the more advanced stuff. Just uh, really touch them all over starting to introduce him to picking up his feet. Um, but we'll, we'll just see how his progress grows, but um, I'm excited for him. He's a pretty good looking Mustang, so um, hopefully we'll get him to the point where he's comfortable around people and he'll find his forever home. Whoa, that was scary, you smell weird. I haven't even eaten anything today. I don't know how, what I would smell like. 